Christmas, a time where people come together to see other people. Often congregating at places, doing things and sometimes stuff. This stuff however is normal person stuff, and it doesn't include any lettering, so let's not bother about these people. In the meantime we can paint our own Christmas sign, and I'll talk you through some of the steps so you can do your own at home. So strap in and get ready for the Christmas sign! So at this stage I'd already made my own design for this, so I'm going to drop it straight into the program and we are going to make ourselves a pattern drawing. And to do that we're going to take our design and put it through the roly roly drawy drawy machine. And that is going to mark out our design so we can trace it out onto the background. At this stage if you wanted to just draw out your own design and then uh, cover the back in chalk or charcoal so that way you can transfer it onto a surface and then paint your own. That's what I'd do as well if I didn't have a drawing. In the meantime, I am cheating and I'm just going to use this to draw it out. Now once I've got it drawn out, at this stage I don't know whether to use chalk or charcoal because I don't know what's going to turn out most on my surface. I want something that I'm going to see really really easily and I mean the better I see it, the better I'm going to work. So what is a good idea to do if you don't know is to put a bit of chalk and charcoal on the same bit of paper and you can trace it out onto a part of the surface and then you'll be able to see what one works better and you can go with that one. In this case, it's chalk. So now we got that sorted out, I'm going to start tracing out my drawing and then in a minute we're going to start painting this bad boy. So now everything's chalked out, you want to decide what brush you're going to want. For this part I'm using a size 0 brown squirrel hair brush. I kind of like the similar brushes in the range and I wanted to give this one a test run. And I like this one because it's got a nice red lacquery handle and you know, I'm a fancy guy for shit like that. So for this beginning section I've decided to go for black. And uh, the good thing about this colour is it's quite a strong colour so you can thin it down quite a bit and you won't have to worry about it not um, spreading too far. So that makes it really easy to work with. Now generally when you're thinning it down you don't want to be too thin that it just kind of runs. Uh, I personally like something that has a bit of grip so it won't be really really thin. You'll feel a little bit of drag as the brush goes around and I find that's kind of best for me. When I'm working with brushes that maybe doesn't hold enough paint then you got problems with it not lasting the whole stroke of the layer, which can be other problems. Now for this second section, I'm going straight onto the white. Now a good thing that you can do with white is to put a little tiny bit of black in there or maybe another colour like blue or something like that and that is going to help your white cover. And uh, if it's the only white that you're using in that section, you're really not going to see the slight change in colour. But it may save you giving it an extra coat of paint. And if no one's going to see it, but it's going to give you a better job in the end, I would definitely take that into consideration next time you're painting with white. And for this section I'm using the size 7 brush of the brown hair range. I just really love these brushes since I got them and uh, there are probably sharper brushes that I can use for something like this but I just find them really enjoyable to use. So in this section I've decided to use tape to keep those edges nice and sharp. The kind of tape I use is a low tack tape. I mean this is kind of just really thin painters tape and there are plenty of better ones that you can get. But to be honest this one does pretty good for me and I just kind of stick with it because it comes from a supply I use pretty often. Now when I was painting this section it was a bit of a struggle. I was caught between wanting to keep the paint quite thin so that it flowed really well but then also I didn't want it too thin that I would need like three to four coats and then it ends up just driving me mad. 
For this section I used probably about medium consistency. Probably a little thicker than I used the black. Now with the wording underneath, I really wanted to do things a little differently. I always hated doing outlines and I found them kind of difficult to get sharp around a smaller lettering like this. So I thought I'd do the outline first. Uh, seeing as I had a drawing anyway, I figured I'd get it pretty close and then just do the lettering on top of that. And therefore have nice sharp edges around the outsides. And this makes this section a whole lot quicker to do. And I knew this brown would be a problem with covering. So I knew I'd have to do two coats possibly. So I figured I'd just do them this way and then that way I'll have less fiddling to do later. The only thing is this is counterintuitive to how you actually do outlines around lettering. Because obviously when you're working with hand painted lettering there are going to be small changes in the letters due to the fact that you are hand painting them. So if you make the shadow and it's not quite the same and then you put your lettering over the top and get a little bit of difference between the two. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now onto the green shadow for the main lettering. And for this section I'm using a size 4. All of the paints that I've used today are all from Ronan's range. I do still use one shot but it is getting increasingly difficult to get. But one thing you should know about using green is that it doesn't cover as well. It's not a very good colour for covering and even though this is a dark green, normally darker colours cover a little better, this one didn't cover very well either and I had to use it quite thin to stretch as far. Overall, really hate using green.
So I've left the sign overnight and the brown is totally dry. And with that, I can grab my drawing and place it back over what I've painted. And then inside there, I can draw the lettering that I was going to originally paint first. And then that way, paint the lettering over the top and have nice sharp edges everywhere around the outside of the layer. And we're going to hope that this matches up okay. Ah, yellow. Another colour that does not cover at all. Now I had to cover this lettering three times in order to get it to cover enough. There is not a yellow I know in sign painting colours that manages to cover in one or even sometimes two. But I suppose that's the name of the game in that territory. And for this section I've used the yellow quite thick and it still didn't cover. But because of that it really wasn't the easiest to use and although this section didn't turn out too great i think it looks pretty good and i know it'll be fixable once i go around it afterwards so by the end this thing's gonna look great So everyone, as this year comes to an end, I'd love to thank everyone for watching these videos. Cannot believe you guys all actually watch this stuff. The fact that everyone watches these videos is really great. I didn't believe I'd actually enjoy it as much as I do. Now if you do get value from these videos and you want to help out, I have just started up a buy me a coffee page and with that you can chuck a few dollars over and it'll help pay for some of the day to day stuff with the channel. I mean often these videos end up taking up materials and time and in the end I, none of it really gets covered and it just ends up being a funnel for any spare change that I got laying around. And truth be told I want to make better videos in the future. I've got aims of improving the quality of it and also doing some more out there stuff with better future projects. I mean in the end it will be stuff that you guys enjoy as well. So if you want to know more about that click on the link in the description below and I'd be happy for any help that you guys can give. Failing that if you didn't want to do that make sure to give this video a like, share it to people who you think would like it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe, because I'll have tons more videos coming in the future. So I really hope you like the video, and until next year, I've been Lewis the Lighthead. Have a good Christmas and a great New Year's. Bye bye.